Okay. All right. Um, ich hab euch hier noch mal das I have the program gemacht, here, so you can all see it. But the conference team had a really good idea, and it's actually in that little booklet you have around your neck here. So we don't have to really talk about each individual point here. What's very important about this conference is that we're going to talk about news, our projects, and what changed since the last conference. And we thought in order to not make you tired, we're not going to do that in one big block, but instead we just split it up a little bit. So we're going to have our first start with our news now, and then this afternoon, the second part, and then we have something about metric system, and then tomorrow we will have the third part. So the topics that we're going to talk about in these three days is just very random. And we just look at the different things that we're working on. And we just looked at what changed here, what's happening. And then we split up into three different presentations. So that's why we only have titles one, two, three here. OK, so that being said, I would like to start development of Czech MK. So first of all, in order to explain that, our slides are in English. They're not in German because we only have one version here. And that's why we thought it's probably easier if they're in English already. And after the conference, you can download them on our website as well. So whatever you see in these slides, you don't have to remember and you don't have to note it down. You can just download it afterwards. So just listen. So development of Czech MK. Um, there is a data bank online, the open source data bank here, and I sort of took it out of that data bank. So I copied the signs of lines of code here. So you can see how this project develops. We only see the open source part here. There's also an enterprise edition here that's not included. But as you can see here, the development is really strong. It's really increasing here, and the people um, that are committed are much bigger as well. They're growing. So I tried to show you a few curves here. For example, here you see the visitors on our websites. There's a tool that we have, and that measures the visitors per month. And what I did is I just looked at the, the month of September of the past few years, and you can see really how the number is increasing here. And also, also the English version of our website for the past two, three years is really increasing as well. As you can see, those numbers are increasing. You can really see that this uh, project is really based in Germany, but it is really establishing internationally as well. Um. Now, the commercial aspect here, so the enterprise distribution here, I looked at the number of support contracts here, so that's really our subscriptions here. Again, you can see the most important countries here. Germany is the leading country again, but also other countries are really growing. They are catching up, so United States, of course. And in the United States, we don't have sales, we don't have an office, we don't have any partners up until now. So that's really impressive number here. So those are our direct clients, direct clients of ours. And of course, there are some problems here, taxes and time zones and so on. So there are some hurdles we are taking. But of course, we have a lot of interesting, well-known customers. Of course, I can't name them here. But we won them over over the last uh, few months, and I'm very, very proud of that. So again, this is how it is uh, distributed here. The red part is Germany. That's uh, really shrinking, actually, um, if you look at the whole picture. But of course, this is still the base. So this is really how this project is developing. OK, now I would like to start with part one of our news. That's our software, what happened here. So I'm going to split up this uh, presentation. I'm going to start with the new raw edition, and then my colleagues are going to take over step by step. I'm not sure who's doing which part, so please just give me a sign and then come on stage. OK, so what's new here is not the software itself, but how we make it available. So really what we improved or what's new here is the Check MK raw edition. 
And the old situation is as follows. So there are a lot of different options of installing CheckMK. A lot of you probably know the packages from district.org, and that is something I have founded myself with a few colleagues. And there are some packages that include CheckMK. However, not necessarily the latest version, because this project has its own version as well. So then you have the option to manually set it up. Who has done this before? And who is still doing it right now? Okay, I'm glad to hear that, actually. And this really means that I really have to do it all myself. I have my Navios myself and so on. So I really have all different components that I have myself. So that's possible, but it's really a lot of work. With Linux, you do the same thing. You use the distribution, and you don't do the Linux from scratch online. So this is really the way we want to get rid of in the future. But it, we still have it supported. It's still working. You can really have have it that way, but this is not our focus anymore. Then we also have packages from our Linux application, so there are uh, CheckMK packages as well in some kind of version or another. And then also we have the subscriptions here, and we also have the appliance as well. Then. Our new situation is a lot simpler now, and that's why we only have three options now. The raw edition is the open source version that everybody can use for free of cost, and that is with the OMD as a basis. It's very easy to update and install, and it's replacing, if you want, the packages of omdistu.org, and it also doesn't need the setup. And then we also have the Enterprise Edition. That was something that we've already had, but it was called differently. That's the packages from the subscription. And those two versions are now parallel with the same version number, so you can really use the raw version and then have the same version of the Enterprise Edition updated if you want. And they are compatible for the most part, and that really makes it simpler. And then, of course, we have the CheckMK appliance and hardware and software, and Lars is going to tell you a little bit more about that. OK, our raw edition is 100% open source. And every stable patch version is released as a raw version here. That is also a progress here compared to the OM distro, because every few weeks we really have this um, for the raw edition. So now we're on the safe side here and working on problems, for example, security fixes and so on can be done quickly. Then the enterprise edition requires a subscription, and that really helps us develop for our development and financing it. And then now with the Enterprise Edition, and a lot of you probably already know that, you also get daily bills here, and that and um, innovative versions as well. So there's also a, a table online. You can really see the differences here. I don't want to go through it in detail now. But um, you can just have a look here. So one of the m biggest differences here is that the Enterprise Edition now for big installations are very interesting in terms of performance, also management, agent, um, and so on, the micro core that's um, doing the reporting and so on. OK, let's talk about the agent bakery now. I don't know, was I supposed to talk about that, or was anybody else supposed to do that? Well, then I'll just do it. So the agent bakery, for those of you who don't know it, in the CheckMK, what you can do, you can use the Jack agent packages, RPM, for example, DVM packages, MSE. I packages for Windows and so on, and you can then make them specific here. So you can have rules for this, and you can say, well, I want this safety package and so on, and then you just um, have your packages afterwards. And a lot changed here as well. So what's most important here is that Almost all plugins and options are now also, um, you can configure them then as well. So you can say, well, on this group of hosts, I want this plugin and so on, and this is um, automatically 
bakeable in here then and you don't have to do it any other way then. Also, you can have your custom plugins in those packages, and then we also support more operating systems here. Which one of you is using the Agent Bakery? Okay, so I can see that's quite a few of you. And later on in a different presentation, you're going to see the roadmap and you're going to see that there's going to be a mechanism to do that automatically, the agents. Okay. So that's going to be tomorrow towards the end of the day. So you have to be a little bit patient here. Okay, so if we write something like this with the um, hashtag here, you can really see the changelog um, and you can see what it means online. So now we have a download page as well where you don't only see the big agents here, but also the different components that's also included in the raw edition. So those of you who are not using the baking agent here, you can still do that directly out of your OMD site. The check MK, you can get the plug from there and then they are compatible with the version here so we have it deleted it from the online portal because that wasn't complete anyways and also the version number wasn't compatible with the version you were actually using and here it's a lot easier in your network you you have access to this uh, CheckMK server and you can just download everything here so the download of these options can happen without login and that that therefore they can be scripted and these this data is online available anyways so that's not a secret so you don't need any credentials here for multi-site site in order to uh, download this so so this really doesn't require curls and makes it a lot easier. Yes. Hold on, microphone, please. Are you planning on also having rep repositories available here so that with my Linux system I can say, well, I want to download MSUSI, for example, and uh, if I have updates for my agents, I don't have to, have to worry about that and so on, so that they all ha happen with the distro jam update and so on? Well, we have a different path in mind here, and we talked about that with our customers, that we have our own mechanism for that. That is then, for example, going to address the problem that if you have 5,000 hosts, for example, and you deploy an agent, and then you made a mistake now, so now all 5,000 hosts are dead or the agent is dead, so then you would say, well, you only deploy a few of them, and then if it works, then we'll do more, and so on. So you can do that in a cryptic way. and. That's what we are doing with our own mechanism here because it doesn't work with the standard mechanisms that are in place. So that's on the roadmap as well. So I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm going to put the microphone right here. Okay, what's new too, we have a generic agents for all operating systems, so that means that the the regular, the not modified agents here, the unmodified ones we have um, to be downloaded right here, you can see that right here, and they are here in this download section on this page. Okay, I already mentioned that. There's also a new page if I'm using the agent bakery and I want to have uh, host specific agents and want to create them, then I can actually get the reach them through a link over the host. So there's a host in our monitoring and with that host, you can actually then get to the agent and then you get to the agent where you can download it for that specific purpose. So some of you might think, why is there five? Not only one. Well, CheckMK can not only know what kind of operating system it is or how you want to use it. <coughs> maybe the host, uh, maybe the agent's not installed yet, and then CheckMK can't know if it's a Windows host, for example. 
So that's why we have these five options here, the five operating systems I can choose from, and I can just say, well, download this one and install it, and then we have this host-specific um, yeah, this whole specific data here. Have you ever thought about the idea that if the agent or if the um, IP address from the agent already gets the right one so that you have one URL that says uh, .msi and then depending on which agent you get, that's what you download then? Well, this is going to happen with this automatic deployment then. This is going to be our solution. So this page is just for manual downloading for now. So this is just the manual access, the easy access. And for the deployment I'm going to introduce to you later on, the idea is that the agent updates itself. Okay, so here you can see how this could possibly happen with this specific agent here. Um, I have the host right here, and then you download the agent you want, then you install it, and then you do the service discovery afterwards. So if you, for example, say all Linux, Oracle hosts have certain plugins, and then you have a new host in this uh, specific area, then you get the right agent where you have that configuration that that you need. Okay, now here's a little overview over additional of additional um, works that we have for this for these agents. I'm not going to talk about that in detail because we have a lot more topics to cover today. But you have it in your slides, and it's all documented, so you can download it. So everything that happens, big things, small things, everything. Okay, I've already mentioned that as well, but I'm going to mention it again tomorrow afternoon in more detail here, what we want to do with deployment here. This is mainly about um, safety here, of course. Um, this is, for, um, of course, um, mistakes you make yourself, and then also cryptographic um, safety here, because there are a lot of um, protection that you need here, so there, there are just no errors. Good. Okay. Now let's talk about the next topic already, and I'm going to let Lars talk about that, and he's going to show you sh some news here. Okay, so nochmal von mir persönlich. All right, uh, from my side, hello and welcome. I'm really happy to be here, uh, all of us today, in these great numbers to talk about the Czech MK. I'm, I will be uh, rediscovering here and there in the program to tell you about different issues. So now I will be talking about the user interface, the greatest uh, innovations we have here, or we've had here in the course of the last year. I tried to present to you. Uh, now the um, screenshot has moved off a bit, but it's okay. One new issue, or one new topic is the matrix view. So uh, similar services, as you can hopefully see in the screenshot. So you have a great number of hosts, like uh, Linux systems, which uh, are of the same kind, a web servers, for example. And by, by definition, they should have uh, the same workload because they are presenting your uh, web pre presence. So you can see the CPU um, load, how's the memory load, uh, and you can see it all over the systems. So have a nice comparison there. You can see anomalies easily. 
This is true for metrics that we uh, get from monitoring, like load and such, but this is also true, and you can see it in lower a screenshot here, for uh, configurations inside the monitoring. So if you have uh, certain settings for your systems, like the check interval or notifications on or off, or the service level and things like that, you can have a table like this, you can make it yourself, and then using this you can see anomalies, you can see configuration errors. So in many systems, so as once it is activated in all systems, uh, you can see if it, in one system it shuts down, you can easily see this in a, in a view like this. The next uh, larger point that many of you may have noticed is the new action menu or the icon pop-up menu in CheckMK until the uh, present stable version. Every host used to have a number of icons in one uh, column uh, which showed the, the status, whether there's downtime or not. It offered actions which you could uh, use to do something like reschedule a check or something. Uh, due to the number of icons that um, came up, I mean, it, it turned out to be like 10 icons per server, so that's a bit um, difficult to, to see through. Uh, also, the actions uh, were not ideally chosen, so in the sense of usability, we wanted to uh, put the actions in a submenu and the status information that you want to see in the first glance, like is there a notification disabled by a host or a server, or is the uh, host or server in downtime? I mean, of course, I want to see that at the first glance and not somewhere in the menu. And the actions that I do more or less rarely are in some kind of submenu. And as soon as we implemented it, uh, first users said, well, we don't like it that much. Uh, this action or that action we are missing. We want to have that on the first click and not the second click. And this happened rather quickly that we made it configurable. So through the global settings, uh, you can choose for your installation whether you want to have certain actions in that menu or in the main view. One nice uh, thing that will help you in update procedures is that the list of works, I mean, you should know the works, or you will know the works. Uh, there you have the change log, so the differences between the versions. Now, if you click on the version number in the upper left corner in the innovation releases, you have a list, which you can see in this list here. This is the list of works that is included in this version. One nice thing about it is, especially for the update procedure, are the uh, incompatible works. So by definition, this is the one thing you really have to take care of when uh, doing an update. So where this may require manual adaption or something. So on, in your site, there is this list, and you can go through all these changes and uh, check them off. Uh, and then you have an empty list in the end, uh, and you can lean back and know that everything will work and all the incompatibles uh, have been checked and, and worked on if necessary. So that's the idea behind it. Then there's something um, which is uh, great for us as developers, the new crash reporting in the past. I mean, uh, those of you who had an exception in the GUI before uh, will have seen the little bomb symbol. So you were able to send us crash reports. Uh, they were sent by email before. Uh, there were problems that sometimes mails were cut off, and then we had to check back and then ask you to resend the crash report so we have changed it to a HTTP-based uh, mechanism. So there will be in the GUI a little dialog box after a crash, and there is some information in it for you. Actually, there's all the information uh, that you will send to us is included there, so there's also more transparency. You know exactly what you're sending us. There is no other information than what's in the report, so it's also a matter of security for you. So you enter your username and your email address and send it to us, and we receive it as a web GUI again. Here, the interesting part for us, it, it made the crash handling easier because 
Here in this line, you can see four crash ideas in a row, and there are similar reports uh, that are being grouped. So for us, they are being shown as one problem that needs to be addressed. So it doesn't mean that after a few weeks we have to go through hundreds of crash reports. And then we happen to notice the same problem over and over, but this uh, groups them for us, uh, making problem or troubleshooting easier for us. Yeah, uh, yeah a question. Uh, will there be a possibility to prepare a crash report offline and uh, get it to you to, in some other way? For example, if the MK system is disconnected from the Internet? Well, in principle, this is something we can think about. Right now, it's online. But wait, once it fails, it does offer you to download the information and export it so you can manually transport it uh, via an email or something and then yeah uh, forward it to us somehow well when it comes to security um, usually not all the data you want to have is uh, allowed to be sent to you right in our security environment so maybe you should have a little check boxes about what yeah. you are allowed to receive and what not well of course this is a bit difficult to implement like reasonably but uh, if we would have if we were to have a check box like anonymize now but of course this is a bit difficult because monitoring um, does have content data in which we're not sure which which have to be uh, anonymized and nominized but um, yeah we can keep thinking about that <laughs> The host which is receiving the HTTP host uh, is it documented somewhere? Can we can we see that? I mean, without in the LAN we have the um, check MK server, and I have to enter um, the the target now. Well, this is a nice detail. Now it's coming out of the out of the browser, so it's a JavaScript code. So as long as your browser is connected, you can check it out. Uh, you can send it out. So check MK does not have need to have its own internet connection to use this feature. You can give it a try, but I would say for the used case, uh, using a workstation with the GUI as an admin, uh, you can also access the workstation usually. So this, this is something that works better than the alternatives we had in mind. Especially when it comes to usability. Then we have a few things about the dashboard. Sidebar snap-ins can be inserted as uh, dashlets. So you have a lot of nice uh, information in those snap-ins. There are a few minor details that I don't really want to go into. LDAP integration is something that we have worked on as well. The biggest innovation is that now you can have several LDAP directories uh, working simultaneously. This is interesting for integration. This is interesting for companies who don't have all the users in one domain yet, like a multi-forest environment. So you can have your users coming from several domains and get them into one check and uh, We are working on that, or we have uh, provided for a name conflict as well, or group uh, settings, um, they can all be um, processed by the check MK. So this is an energy value uh, when it comes to possibilities. A lot of minor changes have happened. One really nice thing, I think, is uh, sorting of check MK services. I mean, this is a really minor thing, but in practice, this helps a lot. The check MK services uh, are usually in the service list quite on top, but now we have adapted it. Uh, so now the check MK services have to be on top of the list. So maybe when you have uh, started a new service and it started with an A, then it used to be in the top of the list, but when it comes to usability, that was not ideal. Services are being uh, sorted, of course, so if you have a service name that contains uh, letters and numbers, this is naturally sorted as a human being would expect it to be. So, for example, when the interfaces have uh, numbers, then, of course, those interfaces with numbers will be sorted accordingly. 
User IDs with special characters for those with LDAP synchronization. This is a very nice feature that it finally works. Even the strangest uh, characters from all ca countries of the world can now be uh, synchronized with CheckMK. Uh, in the past, this wasn't possible. There were incompatibilities in that. And then we tried to have uh, a few characters inserted, like the German umlauts. And then we tried to change them with, with uh, wildcards. But for an international environment, of course, that doesn't work. And now, finally, this all works. We have a lot of minor issues, but I think I have really used up my time here. So I want to make it short. And as Matthias said, I mean, you can read it all in the slides. You have the work lists, and you can really look at it in when you have time. So the next topic would be Wato. Does anyone have prepared this topic? Uh, did anyone prepare this? Okay, Sven is coming. Otherwise, I would have done it. Well, also from my side, uh, welcome to the second Czech MK conference. My name is Sven Roos. I've been with the company since the beginning of the year. Actually, I'm a software developer, but through the flood of, of uh, jobs coming in, also through technical uh, support, this has shifted a bit, and now I'm more or less in pre-sales and sales, and I am the, uh, the responsible one, especially when it comes to how can we integrate CheckMK uh, purposefully in a customer's environment, when we talk about technical questions, how to solve which problem, which can come up uh, in monitoring. I am always the one giving the answers and who can make sure that more contracts are being signed. On the side, I'm also the second in command next to Lars Mikkelsen uh, working on the appliances because I'm usually, uh, actually I'm from the hardware uh, segment. I have uh, programmed a lot for Hardwinger. And now I would like to give you a rough overview what has happened in Vato recently. Of course, in this short time, I cannot give you all the details, but the most important innovations I do want to show you now. I have uh, grouped it up a little, so I'll look at the GUI first, what has happened in the Vato interface. For once, the uh, menu structure has changed a little. What you see immediately, there is this uh, point of monitoring agents where you can have the configuration and the pre-configured agents for download. Then there used to be the hosts and service groups were separated, separate points. They have been grouped together because by definition they do belong together anyway. And now you have one access point uh, for both points and you can do the configura uh, configurations there. There is a new complete point which is the manual checks. It has been reworked completely. All the configurations have been adapted. It is now more comfortable, more user friendly in comparison to what we had before. Then a very large step towards the future and an investment into the structure is the global settings. They were overhauled completely. It's the second screenshot here. You can you see settings that were once uh, they were used in the past and then they were deprecated and these have been uh, well cancelled. They're out of the program. We have looked at the grouping as well and thought about 
which elements can be grouped uh, purposefully and how can we present them so you have a nice and clear and understandable interface here for monitoring. What many may have missed is directly in the check MK uh, to find the information. How can I check for what? And that's why we have this new check plugin uh, menu point. Because you had to look at the ho uh, visit our homepage, look at the catalog of, of check plugins or checks. What do we support? And which configuration is possible? And we have inserted this into CheckMK directly, so you install it and then take a look at what can I configure and how can I do it, because this is a very important point. I want to talk about this later in detail. Well, we have this nice cleared up global settings menu, especially for maintenance settings. Uh, there are fewer settings now, but those points are th really the most important ones and the ones that you really need to change things accordingly. Then I möchte ich mal jetzt noch kurz auf den neuen so I want to talk about the new check-in catalog a little, where you can see exactly what you can do where. So on the home page, we have tried to group it up uh, reasonably uh, according to um, areas of use. And we have um, taken this concept and, and uh, now have an automated um, sorting. So the first point is you can see we have different appliances or we can sort it by operating systems, by network checks. And you can pick one and you have the extended uh, selection there. Now I went to operating systems here and then there is a subgrouping here. Which operating systems are used in this uh, field or are supported in this field? And then I can just select the operating system I need and the rest of the plugins is presented to me and maybe there's even a new subgroup. So I clicked Linux because this was the nicest overview I could find. You see that under Linux, under this operating system, there's a subgrouping again where we group things uh, reasonably like CPU load, uh, memory, Logwatch and so on. Logwatch uh, monitoring. And then you see the checks, which are uh, part of these these uh, groups. There is a little description on the of the plugin name and which agents are being supported by this check. So this is the first um, point of entry, really, uh, and you can keep looking. And if you are interested in, in how this works exactly, how does this or that check work, and what can I, uh, what can I do metrics for, then I can click on the check, and then I have uh, the the man page, so the description of everything, and I have an automated list of parameters available and can get a rough overview so I can use the check or whether I can I can decide whether this check is useful for me right now so we have a question in the audience yeah um, is there a possibility to download all of this instead of going per category and downloading a small bit because this would be perfect if a customer asks what can you do exactly with the tool is there a download everything button and send to the customer? Uh, right now there is not. Well, basically we say we can have an example installation, for example, for the customer where he can just try and play around with it and then he has access to this area. And that helps the customer a lot more than uh, yeah, giving him a completed, complete package right away. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I can't hear because the microphone is not being used. The other possibility is the catalog of Czech plugins on our homepage. It's one very long HTML page, and of course you can send that to the customer. I mean, and it's, it's nice and presented nicely for the customer, but I mean, yeah, you can send them one large HTML page. Okay, this waren, uh, sag ich mal, so die größeren Änderungen. So those were the major changes about Watto. There have been a few changes. We also use uh, our own checks that we download by the change or we write them ourselves. If there's the information in the check, I mean, is this being uh, read in as well or is this for your own checks only? It, it depends on whether somebody wrote a man page for it. If so, then yes, it's included. Okay, dann gibt es jetzt noch, uh, then there are minor changes as well, especially technical changes. So what we've done here, changes that were made in Wato that were that could not be revoked anymore, they can now be discarded. So if you've made a setting and then see, oh, wow, this change was not ideal, then you can just discard it accordingly. This is a change that does uh, help usability a lot. I have a quick question. It, uh, we have several people administrating CheckMK. Is it possible to uh, revoke changes that are just made by one admin because one admin sometimes does uh, five changes and the other one does five? Uh, maybe you want to revoke those five by this one admin. We get this question a lot, and on the first glance it seems to be uh, obvious that it should be able to, to work, but there are some changes that are based on each other. So colleague A is making a new directory, colleague B is uh, creating a host in the directory, so how can you revoke the changes that colleague A made? In, in, in effect, it doesn't work, and I'm afraid it's not feasible, even though it sounds quite obvious. Maybe we come up with an idea at some point, but this will lead to a lot of detail problems, really. Well, maybe Git repo could help on this, in this, because you have changes per CheckMK user in it, and then you can track which configuration file was changed by whom. Well, those who know Git can use the command line and, and maybe try commit revert. But the normal Vato user uh, does not know about this feature. Well, one thing we have added in the global settings, also in the manual checks, we have a search form. Which, so it is quite easy to look for settings or checks uh, via that. It is grouped nicely, but still, if you know exactly what you're looking for, uh, a search form is still more efficient. And you're quicker in finding what you're actually looking for. Then we have made it possible that you can upload SMNP MIBs, so these uh, messages that um, CheckMK receives are being translated immediately, so it's not just code, but it's text you receive. Excuse me, uh, just for the previous question. So do you have a revision uh, history, and uh, I can go back, uh, but uh, I have to discard at least three changes, if the three changes before we had a mistake, or uh, I can just discard the last change. 
all changes. Well, if you click on discard changes, all the changes you have made up to that point, they will all be reversed and discarded. You cannot discard a single point and say, I just want to change this one aspect. To make it clear, all the changes since the last activate changes button, right? But you can also um, upload earlier configuration snapshots. Does that answer your question? Right. Something that was made possible with every check MK installation, or with every monitoring site, we only uh, supply it with the standard agents because many people asked us for it. We have now implemented a general download page, a page on which you can just download the standard agents without username, without logging in. So it's site name, checkmk slash agents, and just you open it by HTML and it's a list. And just to be, uh, just to give you all the information, I have two more slides on which all the changes are listed. So those who want to know can read the, up on this. These are the level two changes. There are also two slides full of level one changes. Part of them are technical, uh, part of them are just for usability. And this is where I would like to present the floor to my colleague who will present to you a few changes in BI. Okay, good morning from my side as well. And the first question is who uses BI? Ah, oh, it's that many of you, okay. Yeah. Okay, so in BI we didn't change a lot, but we did change a few things, so it's worthwhile just looking into it. So the BI editor was restructured a little bit, so that means you can now have a tree structure of aggregations, not only um, uh, rules and you can also show the unused rules. What that means in detail, we're going to look at in a few minutes. And this is what it used to look like before. You see the aggregations on the top and then the rules on the bottom. And now for the unused rules, the top level rules, for example, there was another tree a rule tree of hosts, really, and that was very basic before, but it did work. And now that's a little bit more user-friendly here. So now for aggregations, we have our own page here. And in addition to that, the tree structure that is directly for the aggregations here and really shows you what's included here. What you don't see here, because it's white on gray, what you don't see is the M SD you can fold in here, and that it makes it a little bit easier for aggregations. So for the rules, we still have for top-level rules, at least we have the tree here, but it looks exactly like this. Then the unused rules are very similar to the parameters now, also have their own side. When is a rule unused? It is unused if it's not part of another rule. Uh, or if, and it is also not a part of an aggregation here. So all top-level rules here that don't have an aggregation are included here. 
The next change here that's maybe a little bit more interesting here, BI aggregations now also consider the service period. So what does that mean? That works exactly the same as it does with downtimes. So if you have an aggregation here, for example, that's worst aggregated, then the service period is then on the next uh, level higher up. And if, it's, uh, if you aggregate by best, then it is not. So the BI with downtime, just like with down, downtime, it um, assumes that, and then it really see you can see that in the next level, depending on what kind of logic you define here. So then for downtimes, we changed a little bit as well. Before we had the problem that the host downtimes were not uh, considered for host services, and that is something we fixed now. And also the last point here that's important is, is that now if you have a, a by A aggregation and you have a service now and for some reason this is going to a downtime, then this downtime is also seen in service. So you don't have to do that manually, even if that is part of the downtime because another service is in downtime, for example. So that was really everything I want to see, say to BI. Are there any questions? Making the checks visible, is there a better, better option to do that? Because um, right now there's the possibility, as far as I know, that's Logicheck. And you can um, include that as well. And then you can make it visible for um, maps, for example, in that. Uh, works not very well for us because the the server makes everything visible all the um, and it has to get all the data from uh, different slaves so there's lots of statuses included that we don't need I'm not sure but I think there is a rule for that Matthias well there is a new implementation of the local checks that's an active checks which can be configured through veto and that makes it more um, user friendly of course and also makes this new feature possible but the technical principle is exactly the same because in order to have an um, bi aggregate what you need is asking for the remote sites and the data from the remote sites if this doesn't work for you then it's probably a different reason this might be the sizing issue or a uh, live status proxy, for example, that's very helpful in this case. Ah, last second. Last, just that in NACWIS, you can um, show BI aggregates in without local checks now. So if you want it for NACWIS, um, in, then maybe you can make it work this way. Um, it's definitely more user friendly. And also, it's yeah, it's just more user friendly. I saw a few more questions up here. Um, Regarding BIs, are there possibilities to define them more for documentation and so on? So construction of the aggregate. Can you, for documentation, show that? Mm, no, it really depends on what's in neutral format here. Well, I have a specific problem. I have service reports and the definition of the BIs have to be shown there. Is that possible? And for that, the screenshots are not very good because the objects are usually too big. So there's no possibility to, to do that? No, not right now. Okay. But maybe that wouldn't be so much work to actually do that. We could maybe do that, maybe, you know, if you ask for it, but right now we don't have it. But um, you, we have some problems here that the aggregation function cannot be visible here. And you can see worst or best here, so that's also something that would have to change. I saw another question up here. In our case, we have the uh, beginning hurdle for the BI is always a problem here. So it would be very helpful if we had uh, customers or clients or colleagues that we could give it to and they could actually play around with it. We could say, well, BI, some things would maybe have to change here and we maybe have like an assistant or something and we could maybe have just some examples from standards that could um, help here, that could be visible. I'm not sure how that could be implemented in terms of intelligence here, but 
I think just more intuition here that could actually be helpful because it is very advanced here for monitoring people that are really just starting out. Well, yeah, maybe that's sort of the same way here, talking about the aggregation function here and documenting that a little bit more in detail. Maybe then it's more visible what's happening, and then you wouldn't have to have services tests and really just um, check out that way what is happening. So that could be helpful. Yeah, I agree with that. I really think this is a, a very uh, difficult tool. Um, but we also have to say that the check MK BI is a little bit different than the other BI tools that are doing the same thing, mainly because we don't have any explicit aggregates where we say host A, host B, host C, but we work on a rule base. And that's why I can really have one blueprint for one instance here, and that is then being instanced at 50 times times, and even if one database has five and the other one has 20, then it's automatically being set up correctly. So a function where you can say, please add this service to my aggregate, that um, is not very helpful. For simple cases, that's what we would do, of course. But for bigger installations, this blueprint working way, this this way of working with the blueprint that really does make sense here. So um, I think things can just be found easier. So even if there's a new instance, for example, you automatically have a B aggregate. So adding it manually over a service like others do, that's not a good solution here. So that's why we're still working on that as of right now. I have a question, not directly regarding BI, but the visual part we were talking about, which is the uh, white on gray background that we can't see. That is a problem we've also noticed in other ways. For example, when it comes to hardware software inventory, and it's also white on gray. And I'm wondering why, uh, or would you? Could you actually yeah, change yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> So there are a lot of things that we don't have here. For example, is um, uh, just a color scheme for the projector here. And um, of course, there's not a lot of contrast here. But um, it's also not barrier free. We've had that discussion yesterday, I think. So of course, we still have to work on that. Well, we, we sh should be able to do that. Yeah, but that's only a small problem here. Um, are you thinking about really inheriting the service output here to the uh, first rule? The service output, well, if I build rules, for example, and then I have the um, lowest um, service going to, and then I don't see that service um, output in the aggregation. If I then uh, use the check BI aggregation, then I don't see the service output. Well, the service output is a string, so potentially there are a lot of strings that are um, connected here, so that's not very user-friendly, but it's pro probably possible. Well, we did have it that way in the past, the aggregation function that you can write yourself. There are best, worst, and count as a suggestion that can actually attach those strings. And we've had that in the past, and it looked horrible. And then we thought, well, there's no point to it if there's a top-level aggregate and you have uh, five error messages here. And that's why we don't have it anymore. It wouldn't be difficult, though. Unless you use the long output, then you can have them under each other. Well, that doesn't work because BI aggregate is not a service, unless they are. OK, now let's wrap it up at this point. Do you have anything else you would like to mention here? No, because we're already five minutes uh, late. So let's take a break then.